Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maxim Automation. When we write our code, then we should always think whether we are doing it correct or not. So to validate it, there are some design principles which we can implement to write better code. So in today's video, we're going to see the one of the design principle of solid principles. Solid principles are the design principles which helps in designing the framework. By following the principles, we can create a framework which will be flexible and easy to maintain. SOLID is basically an acronym for five design principles. Here you can see S stands for single responsibility principle. O is for open close principle. L stands for Liskov substitution principle. I is for interface segregation principle. And the last one D stands for dependency inversion principle. Today in this video, we're going to discuss single responsibility principle or SRP. So what does single responsibility principle says? It says that every class which you create in your framework should have only one responsibility or one single purpose to change means that the class should perform only one job a class should not be created in a way that it performs multiple jobs which results in frequent changes in the class and are difficult to maintain so we should create a class in a way that in the future we should have only one reason to change the class a single responsibility does not say that you can only create a single method in your class. Class can contain multiple methods, but they all should relate to a single responsibility. Now let's understand this principle by looking into this example. This principle is applicable for any language you use for your framework development. For example, if either you are using Java or C Sharp, then this principle applies to both the languages. Currently, I'm going to discuss it by creating an example using classes in Java. But if you are working on C Sharp, then also there is no difference in creating the class structure. So irrespective of the language which you are using, you can go ahead and watch this video to get the understanding of the single responsibility principle or SRP. So here I have this employee class which contains method for adding an employee into the system. Also, it computes the salary of an employee. And this is also used in assigning an asset to the employee. As you can see that these are the different responsibilities to perform. Like computing the salary for an employee is totally a different job as compared to adding an employee to the system. So to calculate the salary in the same class is violating the single responsibility principle. And According to the principle, we should have different classes for different responsibilities. Now, what we can do to follow the SR principle. So here we can create another class for salary. Now let me create a new class first. And I'm going to call it as salary. And then in this class, we can have the method for computing the salary of an employee. And we can have other methods as well in this class, which are going to help in all salary related operations. So in future, if I need to change anything related to salary, then I can come to this class and can do my changes directly over here. So I should not come back to this class in case of any other reason. Let's say I need to do some changes related to asset management then I should not change the salary or employee class. Let's say if in the future there is a change in the formula which we need to update to generate the salary of an employee, then I only need to perform the changes in this class. And this will reflect the changes at all places where we are calling this method to get the salary of an employee. Similarly, for asset related responsibilities, I can have another class created for assigning an asset on the name of an employee. 
where we can provide all the methods which are responsible for asset assignations. So let me create another class. And I'm going to call it as assets. And then I can create the methods here for assigning an asset to the employee. And the other methods which are responsible for asset management. Here I have one method which will assign assets to the employee. And the other method which will return the list of asset numbers which are assigned to an employee. Let's say this method takes the argument as an employee class object and the asset number. And this method takes the argument as the employee class object and returns a list of asset numbers. So I have broken out different parts of my framework into different classes. Now anyone can get the idea if they want to update the code related to the salary calculation. Then they can go to the salary class. Similarly, if anyone wants to do changes related to assets, then they can go to the asset class. So we should always create different classes for different responsibilities. I know you might be thinking that this is going to create too many classes in the framework. Yes, of course, when we divide the classes based on single responsibility, then we are going to have multiple classes in our framework. But I don't think that is a problem because if I have to solve a problem related to salary, then I know where I need to go. I don't need to look at all the classes and every class will be easy to read and easy to understand. Having too many classes is not going to slow your framework performance, but they are definitely going to help in maintaining your framework. When I say that we can have too many classes in a framework, that does not mean that we should create hundreds and thousands of classes without giving a single thought. So while creating classes, we only need to keep in mind does this class have two responsibilities or do I have two reasons to update this class? When the answer is yes, then you should split your class so that each class will have a single responsibility to perform. So dividing the classes based on single responsibility helps us in better readability and better maintainability of the framework. I hope you liked it. Also, I would like to hear your thoughts on this as well. And you can put your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel.